Will this year mark the resurgence of RTS since a lot of games are coming out? I feel like almost every RTS has dumped down mechanics these days. Back in my day, you had to send your own workers to work. They did exactly what you told them to and nothing more. They didn't start working at the start of the game either. Every new RTS tries to lower the barrier of entry, which is understandable because that gives life to games that would otherwise perhaps fail because they become accessible to those that might otherwise find them too difficult. And they feel like it will increase the amount of people that end up playing it among the RTS audience that would already consider playing RTS. But I always wonder what part of the feeling of an RTS gets lost for those for whom RTS is in their blood, like me. What part of the feeling gets lost when you keep stripping away difficult layers? What are you left with? And that is a question I don't have an answer to yet. And I think in the end, what it comes down to is not just how many layers were stripped away, but how many layers were added. A lot of RTSs looking to remove layers and be like, this economy part is too complex, but what are they adding? I think that's just as important. I like hardcore RTS. I think AOE 4 was a good hardcore RTS and still is, but it had many engine problems because they were not experienced, the studio that made it, Relic, at making multiplayer RTS. And this is the ask on a competitive multiplayer RTS. And this is the ask on an RTS like Frostpunk and Godsworn and, you know, Settlers. And it's night and day difference. It's this much difference. There's, you need way more robust engine that does exactly what you needed to when you expect it to, as fast as you needed to, without, you know, bugs and quirks and idiosyncrasies. Whereas with just an RTS that 30,000 people will review on Steam, that was really good, it had the vibe, it was fun gameplay, you played PvE, maybe you tried like 5 1v1 online. The, the ask is so much smaller. They're allowed to have mistakes, they're allowed to have shortcomings, because it doesn't go that deep for most of the average player base. So some of these RTSs that are coming out right now, uh, or, or soon, or in the next year or two, right? Some of them aim to be like StarCraft, and that means our expectations are sky high. Others, they say, we're not going to run an esports team. What do you mean esports? This is a Wendy's. We're two people. <laughs> esports team? Are we going to set up tournaments and give out licenses and, and try to put in 10k, 50k prize money? No, no, no. We're just hoping that our company still exists in a year or two. We hope that this game will be sold, right? There's a big difference between those two. And the, the games that maybe could also be esports, uh, that's usually classic RTS. All the other RTSs, I wouldn't even include them in the resurgence of RTS because RTS isn't dead and it isn't down. Look, take for instance, yeah? Name me an RTS, Frostbank, right? Frostbank, how many people reviewed it? 80,000. Let's say that 2% of people reviewed it. 85,000 times 50 times a thousand over four million people got frostpunk right and played it and enjoyed it they enjoyed it a lot but frostpunk is not a multiplayer competitive so i don't think this is part of the rts resurgence if you will because this part of rts never had a decline i'll tell you what is a show of the decline of rts multiplayer competitive when justin tv was not twitch tv yet and, and when live streaming of gaming just stood in its infancy and was beginning, StarCraft 2 was the most popular game uh, in live streaming. This is 2010 or 2011. You had StarCraft 2 tournaments with hundreds of thousands of viewers. It was the game on Twitch and remained so for a year until 2011, 2011 and a half. And of course, new games uh, start coming up, but StarCraft 2 was the shiz. You had StarCraft 2 streamers like Idra and Huck and Stefano. They would have like 10, 20,000 viewers. That was perhaps the peak of online enjoyment of our RTS competition. What is the next Art StarCraft 2 like multiplayer competitive RTS that came out after StarCraft 2? Because before StarCraft 2, there was Warcraft 3, eight years before that. What's the next one that came out after StarCraft 2, which is like StarCraft 2? Nothing. Only Age of Empires 4. It's the first one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is the only existing 
online multiplayer competitive RTS that are classic. Classic RTS esports ready. StarCraft 1 that, that are being played right now. StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2, Warcraft 3, Age of Empires 2, Age of Empires 4. That's it. Just five games. Five games. There are other RTS, but they're either not big or have never had big esports. Five RTS games in the last 25 years. You've got two kinds of RTS that spawned forth from classic RTS. MOBA and Sim RTS. Frostpunk, Godsworn, Northgard, Sim RTS. There's as much RTS in them as there is SimCity. That's the casual approach. And MOBA is the I hate life approach. Great games, but you have to work with teammates and it's all about the multiplayer, right? So it kills your sanity. So there's two kinds. I like both, but I don't think either MOBA or Sim RTS are part of the resurgence of RTS. After Age of Empires 4 came out, I realized none of the new kids that you would call your nephew or niece are playing it. I thought naively so that Age of Empires 4 would be dominated by 17 year olds, right? Someone that was born in the generation after us, but it never happened because they're playing other games. I understand that now. If another RTS comes out, that's a classic RTS in 10 years from now, the rank one player will be 50 years old. Lucifron, Lucifron and Vortex, they're going to be 40, 50 years old and they're going to be rank one. Even if you put a 20k prize pool uh, for a beta tournament, they're still going to be 40, 50 years old. So we have Starcraft 1. When did it come out? 1998. 1998. When did Age of Empires 2 come out? 1996, perhaps? Oh, AoE 2 is 1999. Okay. And then you have Warcraft 3 2002. And we're not counting the expansions, which might be like a year later. Then you've got Starcraft 2. Is uh, 2019 if you count... Uh, sorry, 2009 if you count the beta. But let's say 2010. 2010 was beta, 2011 released, something like that. But let's say 2010. And then you've got... AoE 4, Age of Empires 4, which uh, is uh, 2021, I think. 2021. Don't say Command & Conquer. Command & Conquer is not an online multiplayer competitive game with a bustling esports game. These are the only five RTSs that have ever had the what I define as the classic RTS with esports. These are the only five. And this one is uh, huge. This one is, I don't know actually. I think AOE 2 had its resurgence with its remaster, but let's say it's big. Warcraft 3 was huge, Starcraft 3 was huge, and AOE 4, small. AOE 2 is big? I don't think so. Is it really? Yeah, AOE 2 big, but not huge. Yeah, it's big right now, yeah. So let's say the impact on esports was huge, big, huge, huge, small. So we are now looking at all the other RTSs, like God Sworn and, and, you know, all these RTSs that we see on Steam that do well, like Frostpunk. None of them are part of this list because none of them have aspirations, realistic aspirations anyway, to become a multiplayer online competitive esports game. So what are the actual follow-ups that are coming that aim to be like these usually it's maps that started inside one of these games and then spawned off because they realized blizzard doesn't want to work with you right there's no uh, financial recompense for you to make a map in the starcraft 2 editor the warcraft 3 editor is somewhat difficult but you can learn it starcraft 2 editor is even more difficult but you can learn it. You need to be quite talented to make a map in StarCraft 2 map editor. Talented and learn it, right? And there's no financial incentive to do so because Blizzard will not work with you. Or maybe StarCraft 2 has a little bit of cooperation with map makers now, I believe. Very late stage StarCraft 2 finally opened up a bit. But if you are like ambitious about your map, you know you need to start making your own. So what kind of games do you have that aim to be like that, that came out? You've got uh immortal gates of fire or something right and then you've got stormgate you've got zero space and i would say that tempest rising 
is probably not aspiring to be in this list, but they're inspiring, aspiring to be in this list. So Command and Conquer, Command and Conquer Generals, Red Alert, Company of Heroes. These are RTSs that do not aspire to be in this list. They're not going to dedicate prize money to esports, right? They just want to be a good game people like to play, buy, maybe buy one or two expansions off, and then they're going to go make their next game. They're mostly single player focused RTSs because multiplayer, eventually, you will always have the problem of is it balanced? Are you banning cheaters? Is it sustainably replayable? Is it diverse in its playstyle or is it just one OP uh, strategy? So what else is in this list? Age of Mythology probably has multiplayer, right? Age of Empires 3. Age of Empires 3, Age of, Age of Mythology. Why do I not put them in the list? Because they were tiny. I don't know why he keeps bringing up Frostpunk. There's literally no micro. Because I am making a distinction between what RTS means. Frostpunk is also an RTS. So is They Are Billions. So is Against the Storm. Why do I bring it up? Because there's no words for it. A table is a table and a chair is a chair, but you can sit on a table. An RTS is an RTS. Frostpunk is an RTS, so is Warcraft 3. But what is their impact actually? How is it played? Is it played single player? Is it played multiplayer? Is it like more like a city builder and a sim game? Or are we actually harassing each other's economy? So the question is, what will be the impact of these games in the multiplayer? What are the expectations? Why did we start this whole comparison and this whole talk is because people asked, do you think there's a resurgence of RTS in 2024? And I'm saying uh, there's no need for a resurgence because games like this come out, right? RTS is real, it is sellable, it is profitable. But for classic RTS with esports and multiplayer, a resurgence would have to knock one of these off their perch. Now, StarCraft 1 is relatively small for playing outside of Korea. There's just one angry dad outside of Korea playing it. And then it's all Koreans for the rest of it. Then for Age of Empires 2, it has a resurgence scene because of Master, uh, the remaster and the remaster was good. Warcraft 3 has a very niche scene by now for esports. The prize money is in the hundreds or sometimes thousands. And those uh, tournaments are spread out over the year, maybe a couple per year. And so the impact is no longer huge. Its impact was huge for many years. By now, Warcraft 3 is very small. AoE 2 is probably a little bigger or similar. StarCraft has a scene in Korea. I'm not very aware of it anymore, how big it is. I'm assuming it's not huge. StarCraft 2 Esports is probably the biggest of all, which is why any RTS that wants to make RTS more popular now than it already is would have to compete against StarCraft 2. It would have to be more interesting than one of these five games that is still playable now. Because you don't need to get a new better car if your car still works. And you're not going to trade it in for a worse car. Like, yeah, the car is old, but it still works. You know, it still gets you to places. These all have history. They all have a rich franchise. Right? The control scheme in three of the in two of these is good. <laughs> these have a good control scheme. <laughs> this one got better after lots of feedback that I personally bled for. Uh, this one will never get better because it will change how the game feels and the oldies aren't gonna like it. Right? And this game is only meant for watching and raging uh, and for Koreans. Right? And it has an old control scheme that will also not change. So any new game would have to have a better control scheme than StarCraft 2 in order to feel good, which is very hard because SE2 is by far the best in its control scheme ever made for RTS. It would have to be more fun than the power fantasy of heroes in Warcraft 3 and the art design that holds up to today and the very good voice work that holds up to today. It is closest in release time to AoE 4 but AoE 4 has a small niche scene now. Uh, so, yeah, you can you can beat AoE 4 in a number of ways. You may not beat it in sound design. I think AoE 4 has one of the best sound designs among RTS. If I had to rate them in sound design, I would say StarCraft 1 is extremely goaded. AoE 4 is very good as well. StarCraft 2 is 
very good. Warcraft 3 is good, and AoE 2 is good. They're all really good. Like, I think they're all 8 plus out of 10. I think they're all an 8 plus out of 10. Music or sound design? Both. Both. These all have really good music and sound design. I think they're all a 9 plus. So it's really hard to beat any of them in sound. So these games are all smaller projects, mostly by people that have left, uh, you know, the world of Blizzard loyalty. Like they were loyal players or they were loyal employees and they've left because Blizzard has become a monster, right? So which one is going to cause a resurgence of RTS or be more popular than one of the five? I think just probability says none of them are going to be able to compete with those five. Probability. But games aren't just about which one is the best. They are also about creating something new, creative and unique, which can be a fun experience. Even if vanilla ice cream is your favorite, you would still enjoy chocolate now and then, or strawberry. You don't want to have only vanilla ice cream all the time, even if you keep coming back to it. And it's the same here. Even if those five are the best, that doesn't mean you can't purchase and enjoy the games. Robbie, do you think Blizzard spoiled us as RT's yes. fans? The bar is set very high. Yes. Yeah. Blizzard is kind of like that douchebag, this hot dude that came in. And uh, when you were on a break with your girlfriend, she was with that guy. And then he dumped her and treated her badly. But for that one night, he showed your girlfriend you're on a break so it wasn't cheating that she could have so much more but then he's not giving it to her anymore but now you're not good enough anymore either blizzard is tanner yeah so anyway i think these can still be commercially viable you can still enjoy them we were on a break <laughs> this never happened to me by the way but maybe it happened to some people in chat and i empathize with you these can all be commercially viable they can be enjoyable, but will they have the staying power of these five? That is extremely challenging. I doubt it, but I will keep trying games like this to discover if it is possible. I think they deserve to be showcased. I have a big audience for RTS and for games. I will showcase them, but I'm not going in with the mindset that I need these games to save RTS because that will lead to an unobjective look that will not be a fair representation of what they are or what they represent. Because RTS doesn't need saving. It will either be saved because the games are good enough to justify themselves without marketing of me or anyone. They will either be saved in that way or they will not be good enough. And then us trying to tell you that they're going to save the RTS, us, the influencers, would be disingenuous and would set you up for a disappointment. So... And, and maybe RTS will not be saved. Maybe Everybody we have come to a new world where RTSs are single player. Shout outs to everyone who wakes up in the middle of the night to the three hour for video. I get recommended my own three hour FFA video every time. <laughs> so you play YouTube at night to fall asleep, my Warcraft, and then it goes to that one and you're like, oh, this one's on again. Yeah. Thank you, YouTube algorithm. So yeah, that is my approach and my view of these RTS games. I am cautiously pessimistic. I sometimes say cautiously optimistic, but I think that I have difficulty seeing how they're gonna be better than the others, but I will still probably enjoy them. Like I will still enjoy them cautiously pessimistic, cautious not to discard them out of sight. Aggressively nihilistic, <laughs> we'll come up with some uh, adjectives and so on. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. So let's see where RTS go. I will follow it closely and I'll show it with you guys. I'll show it to you guys.